Hi everyone, welcome back to Naughty Guys. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so this episode, we're gonna talk about why not any other bearing model, which we could have afforded. No. <laughs> In this episode, we're gonna compare the different bearing models closest to ours and... There has been a lot of comments from you guys saying, why did you not get 77? I love that 77. We love the 77. Why couldn't you just figure out a way of doing whatever you want to do on a 72? Why not 70? So there were yep. a lot of questions like that. So we would love to answer you guys in detail because on this channel, we actually get an opportunity to get a little bit more in depth. And we also get to show you what is bearing 75. I feel like we haven't even showed you guys renderings or any of the layouts or anything at all. So maybe we'll show you a little bit more than the website has. You guys got a little glimpse in the last episode, obviously that we're gonna be doing charters on this boat. So I had to check off a few boxes, but we will dive in a little bit more and give you a little bit more information. Let's concentrate on that right now. Because, in this episode, because this I, is what also, we're do. I also wanna talk about, in the, that's gonna be a completely different episode about hybrid and not hybrid and why and, and so on. And you know, I, some of the comments were like, oh, why did you guys get such a big diesel gasler? That's gonna be a whole different, <laughs> <laughs> whole different episode. We will spend some time to talk about all of that and yeah. also break some stereotypes and do some hard numbers and data to give you guys real information and not just stuff like, I feel that it doesn't look like that. Real hard facts. Factual data that um, you can take to the bank and know that this is real information. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Let's, let's dive in. Yeah. Let's oh, you wanted it. to say that, huh? You wanted to say that? No, let's, let's, let's go ahead. I'm looking at a beautiful boat here on the screen. So this is bearing 75. talk about well the easiest one why not bearing 70 the simplest explanation is that model was more affordable but it did not check off the big boxes the big thing for us was obviously this is going to be our new home so this yacht has to have space for us to live on so the 70 is a three cabin layout plus so, a small crew quarters the forward vip was just not big enough not big enough storage wise we need a little bit more space for sure. So we would have had to take the master, which would have left the VIP and then the bunk, bunk cabin. It would have been a pretty expensive purchase, which would have had very, very minimal way for us to support it with charters. We would have not been able to do it. I mean, you can charter this boat if yes. you have a crew, which is just in the crew quarters. Correct. If you own the 70 and you put a crew on it to charter that boat while you're not on board, and they can charter three cabins out and they can stay in this crew quarters, it's great. As you guys saw in the, our video of the 70, the crew quarters is just gonna get even more comfortable on the, the brand new layout. The mm -hmm. boat, they got a bit wider. So it's going to be a definitely a decent crew cabin and totally chartable. For yeah. us, as an owner operator, it's not what we wanted to do. Yeah. We wanted to do comfortable charters and have a really comfortable space to live. So that ruled out the 70. So then the next model we were looking at was the 72. The 72 is basically a big sister of 65 yes. and a small sister of 77. So on the 65, the master is forward. On the 72, the master is midship. So since we're talking about B72 and B75, this might be a good time to talk about displacement versus gross tonnage. Yeah. 
it's not a really exactly common knowledge what that is. I mean, you have some of the clients that are long-term boat owners that don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. It's definitely explained in the captain school. Mm -hmm. It's part of the exam. I feel like a lot of recreational boaters, which don't have a captain's license, don't really know what the gross tonnage actually means. Like every captain's license in the world is attached to gross tonnage. That's the difference between recreational and commercial or professional. It comes from the uh, merchant mariner's world. My license is 200 tons, so um, it's 200 gross tons, which doesn't mean the weight. It does not mean that he is limited to driving a two, boat which is 200, 200 ton. metric ton yeah. boat. So let's explain it and then we'll dive in and explain to you what the 72 versus 75 looks like because I think it's going to make a little bit more sense. Okay. If you have a bathtub which is completely full with water, it's not overflowing but it's at the level of overflowing. And now I'm taking a boat and have it putting it in there. So everything which overflows at the moment where I'm having the putting the boat in there, that amount, that volume is the displacement. What that boat displaces in... In water in that case. In water, yeah. So a boat displacement is defined as a weight of the volume of water displaced by it when afloat. The displacement is really important uh, when you're putting a boat in the lift. Because yes. Because you're going to be limited when you're getting hauled out. Yeah, if your to... displacement is 160, you can't... Um, it's going to be hard to get lifted out with a 100-ton crane. That's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. So that, Only is, one time. that is when it's used. If you're trailing a boat, of course, that's really important um, to know the weight. And if you're getting hauled out, really important. Kind of stops there. Now we go into gross tonnage. So gross tonnage is attached to captain's licenses. And it's also attached to the volume of the boat. It's also heavily regulated all over the world. There are multiple steps. One is length, which is um, a regulation factor. The other one is gross tonnage. So for example, if you go over 500 gross tons, it, you're going into a complete different world, even with a private yacht. You right. become a commercial boat, full blown. Part of it is you need to have a full-time on watch engineer. Engineer on the bridge, yeah. 24 hours, 24 seven. It becomes a cost factor. I mean, it's just a lot of different things which are attached to this insurance wise, regulation wise and so on. That's why you see so many larger super yachts that are 499. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 499 is the magic number. That, just under 500. Yeah, that they all uh, would like to meet. Gross tonnage. I will give you the exact uh, textbook definition. Gross tonnage is calculated based on the molded volume of all enclosed spaces of the ship. And it's used to determine things such as a ship's manning regulations, manning regulations <laughs> safety rules, registration fees, port dues. Well, in simple language, yes. interior volume. The boat is tall out of the water in terms of the first main deck you could tell there's gonna have a lot of gross tonnage on paper because it got a lot of interior and closed space down below. That's right. Immediately by looking That's at right. the boat, you know? That is, that is correct. So now we're gonna go back and look at bearing 72. And what was the 70? So this way we can compare yeah. it all together. So bearing 70 is 102 gross tons. Mm -hmm. Bearing 72 is 120 gross tons. And then 75 is technically three feet apart from 72. And that is 174 gross tons. Which is massive. I mean, absolutely massive. I have never been on any other vessel which is under 80 feet and has 174 or over 170 gross tons. Yeah. So you get a lot of internal volume out of that vessel. Especially for the length. Going from 70 to 72, you basically gaining 18 gross tons and you're going from 72 to 75. You 54. 54 gross tons. That's a lot. That is close to 50% of, of gross volume <laughs> of 72. Yeah. That is huge difference. Of course, the 72, if you look at the layout, you've got three down below cabins and you've got, you know, crew quarters mm -hmm. all down below. And on the 75, you've got four guest cabins and you have crew quarters on the main deck. So obviously that's even more so with everything else there. So it's already there and we're not even talking about a sky lounge on top. Mm -hmm. You definitely get a lot more boat. So And it gives us a lazarette. Exactly. Looking at what we wanted to do, the 72 again put us in the same position. We would have had to live in the VIP, which 
definitely was a bit it's, bigger. It's a little, it's yeah, a little bit bigger. It's bigger yeah. than the 70, for sure would have been better. But after looking at it, we just felt like, I mean, if we're going to do this and do it right, we want to make sure we have a proper cabin. Another thing which was kind of important, if we would have taken the VIP, technically we would be on the same level as a twin gas cabin. It just felt all a little close quarters for it to be our home. That ruled out the 72, Yes, basically. For us privately, it would have been freaking awesome. It was a big decision because financially it was a big step up and it took a lot of everything we had to do yeah <laughs> months of trying to figure out can we afford a 75 and so of course when we arrived to the decision that maybe we could do a 75 we were left with decision 77 versus a 75 so that is really the big question that a lot of you are asking us mm -hmm. price point is the same the driving factor here was that we wanted to do some charters to offset the cost. That's right. Um, we enjoy doing them. So we want to make sure that it was great, comfortable guest cabins. We want to make sure we had a good cabin. A big thing for us was we just felt like we could never ever find in this 75 to 80 foot length, a four fair, good well, guest cabin layout. Technically we have a five cabin layout plus crew. Correct. So it's six cabins, all en suite, which one of them is crew cabin, yeah. which is a big yeah. crew cabin which is huge it's unthinkable as we guys told you in the last episode it's really hard to find once alexi said that is a possibility for us to have our cabin in the sky lounge. in the sky lounge that basically was a tipping point because on the 77 we wouldn't really have that option of course we want to make sure that our guests would have still have plenty of exterior flying bridge type space Correct. to enjoy outside Correct. and the 77. Well, the 77 has a way shorter foredeck, even though it's a, technically on paper a bigger boat. Putting our cabin in the flybridge of 77 didn't make sense at all. An open flybridge, so it would have to be enclosed. I mean, it's, you're changing completely the boat. Alexei was not really on board with it. It didn't make sense to us. We I mean, just, we, we, we love the 77. Yeah, the 77. I mean, the 77 made us fall in love with bearing. We also really like the look of 75 and the 80. It's more modern looking. It breaks stereotypes of what Exploriat looks like. I think the 75 and the 80 are the best looking bearings. That really comes down to taste, you know, and everyone's yep. got their own taste. We can appreciate that like rugged explorer look of the 65, 72 and 77. We were drawn to that modern yacht well that's exactly what it is yeah the 75 looks like a really like nice a, like super a mini yacht. super yacht exactly with 150 percent of explorer dna and that was really attractive to us we just both you know i just remembered mm -mm. so i'm gonna share this with you guys he has no idea what i'm about to say um when it's probably something mean about me <laughs> no actually the joke's on me i think because when Rico and I got together and we were looking for a boat, we spent months walking around Marina del Rey, walking the dogs oh and God, looking then, at yeah. boats, different boats. Like, do you like how that looks? Do you like how that looks? Do you like... And Rico really liked the look of trollers. Oh, he was yeah. like, oh my God, look how cute this looks. And I was like, oh, man, we're too young for this. Maybe someday, you know, when we're like in our 60s or something, maybe we can go for a troller. And what do we now? <laughs> It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. The first time I took her at the boat show on the Nordhaven, we climbed like all the way up and checked everything out. And I was like, oh my God, isn't that amazing? And she was like, um, like I don't think I'm old enough for this. We're like, too young for this. <laughs> this feels like an, for an older couple. And it's really funny because I love what it had to offer and the capabilities and the fuel economy and all these cool things that you could offer on the power yacht. But the style was just not doing it for me. Yeah. Uh, so, so the fact that we're now building technically a troller. Yeah, full displacement, yeah. Uh, is pretty hilarious because the joke is totally on me. We I didn't like it. really have this discussion. I you like get what it. you want. But now we both kind of, it's not like Rico loves that look and not, we both really like the, the look of, like he is actually the one, was the driving force of, we really like the look of 75. I warmed up to the kind of a classic explorer that yeah, look, yeah, I warmed yeah. up to it, I was open to it, I could have been really happy with the 77. Well, also things changed a little bit. Yeah. 
like most of the successful um, explorer yacht builders. There's not the, that many. They're not yeah. that many, but the ones which are successful in the industry. They, and they, forward thinking. They modernized the exterior look of the boat. And I think that's what got a lot more people also interested in explorer yachts. The fact that they can go anywhere, can have this long range capabilities and, and all that stuff. I mean, obviously that, that is an interest already in the first place. But then now having the modern looks to it and combine it together, that's the reason that industry is just exploded. I agree. So anyway, that is a, a really long explanation how we ended up with 75. It was a long decision. I mean, it took us months uh, besides the financial decision. Yeah. But the 75 could really accommodate what we wanted for charter. I mean, there's a lot of purpose built in here for us. When you see our layouts are quite different from what you're seeing online, there's some changes that we made because we have this vision for our owner operator charters mm -hmm. we have experience so we know what we want to do and we need to make sure that we have a vessel that satisfies that please keep putting it down in the comments what your concerns are what you're interested in i have a giant list of everything that we want to talk about on this channel i keep updating it based on your guys comments which actually drove us to this video yep. because you guys keep asking us how did why did we not choose this or this or this model so please let us know in the comments if this answered your question why we chose this model versus the other ones and most importantly of course we will film and have episodes about all the milestones of the build i mean no question you're yeah. gonna you're gonna see that as well exactly all right cool that's well, it enjoy the outtakes no do we have outtakes do we ever do are we gonna okay do you guys want to see outtakes on naughty guys please put it put it below don't break his heart ciao go ahead you usually say hi perfect exactly perfectly perfect well, yeah. Perfectly. Yeah, perfectly. But we were drawn. We were. We were drawn. We were drawn. 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 drawn such as a ship's ma uh, ma 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 manning regulations. Manning regulations. <laughs> it just. Sorry. <laughs> besides, it was. It felt like straightforward. Hey, wait thinking. a moment. Welcome to Miami. Just go somewhere else. Welcome to Miami. Where's he going? The which nowhere. Way? He's going nowhere. He's just zigzagging around. Really. Now he's going. And why does it need to be right in front of the bye bye. buildings? I'm, I'm pretty sure he's unaware that you're filming for your own YouTube it, it's channel. It's just this entire Biscayne Bay. like. But just... you noticed him. You noticed him. And that's yeah. why he's here. Okay.